amazing buzz generating asset for your business. Um, it is fascinating to me why uh, more businesses, authors, consultants, etc., uh, have not come to understand the power and potential that Wikipedia uh, possesses. Um, to understand, Wikipedia in and of itself is um, an, a tremendous third-party credibility generator. Um, I think one of the reasons why so few businesses actually use it is because, in fact, it's not terribly easy to master. But once you do it, you reap the benefits. Um, and so it is not, with all of the courses, et cetera, et cetera, that talk about search engine optimization, very few of them point to Wikipedia. This 30-minute uh, conference call, teleworkshop, is an introductory overview. The bad news is that you're not going to be able to master Wikipedia in one 30-minute teleworkshop. Uh, on the other hand, the good news is that for anyone on this call who comes to understand the buzz force of Wikipedia, um, we'll be here as a group to help you continue your education and ultimately post and reap the benefits of a truly quality Wikipedia entry. We're expecting about 40 people on this call. Um, at the end of the call, if you want, we'll match each of you, every single person on the call who wants to participate, with three other buzz snatchers um, to form an ad hoc virtual team. Uh, each member of the team will help the other members on the team to edit and post a Wikipedia entry. There's no cost to participate and certainly no obligation to participate, only the option. Why it is that I think it's best to have teams of four, I'll explain to you in a few minutes on this call. Those who know buzz snatching, and especially those who um, uh, enriched um, my um, consulting by attending the course I conducted last week in Austin, um, know that a central premise of buzz snatching is to go where your audience already gathers, <coughs> Excuse me, especially when your audience gathers in large, large numbers. Um, I think that perhaps the dumbest buzz-generating concept ever was, if you build it, they will come. For the most part, when you build your own blogs, you build your own websites, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's a real slog to try to get and build an audience there, um, especially of people who do not already know who you are. So what's the truth about all of this? The, the truth is why build it yourself when others with a lot more resources, skill, and or luck have already built it. Um, I'm a fan of third-party credibility and large audiences. Um, I like the idea of being able to tap in and harness other people's websites rather than having to do it on your own. Uh, certainly at the top of my list is Wikipedia and Amazon. Uh, I'll save Amazon for a future teleworkshop, so today my focus is going to be on Wikipedia. I'd like to start by really making the case for Wikipedia. Um, people think of it first and foremost as a encyclopedia, which gives it enormous third-party credibility, probably even more third-party credibility than a mainstream, than an article in a mainstream newspaper or magazine. Um, Wikipedia, when it comes to Wikipedia, there are literally millions of people searching it every day already. Um, you don't have to go out of your way uh, to get people to use Wikipedia or to be searching for the information that they want. Based upon statistics that Wikipedia provides, uh, there are about 400 million unique visitors a month, which makes it the fifth most popular site, um, website of all websites, all languages in the world. So from my perspective, that means it's search engine rocket fuel. Um, here's what I have found, that a good Wikipedia page will land your company. And I use the word company, but for those people who are on this call who are authors, consultants, um, any kind of personality, just substitute yourself. Uh, but I'll use the word company since most of the people who registered um, are involved as business owners or entrepreneurs. But anyway, a good Wikipedia page will land your company at the top of the Google organic search engines when people want to read about you. So if people are looking for your business um, and they enter your business name in uh, Google search, um, when you have a solid Wikipedia entry, that entry will show up among the top 10 
organic search results. And importantly, and I'll show you this in a couple of minutes, um, will likely be the highest um, posted, highest returned search result that is not from you yourself. Um, so therefore, people who are trying to learn about you and don't want to read what they perceive to be your website or the propaganda you're putting out will turn to um, Wikipedia to do that. That's a, that's a good Wikipedia page. A great Wikipedia page will land your company at the top of the Google organic search results when people are looking for your expertise, but they don't yet know anything about you. So if you're a personal if you're a financial planner and they're looking for financial planning expertise, um, if you're an architect and they're looking for architectural expertise, etc., they may not search um, Google um, look with your name or your business name. But if you have the right kind of Wikipedia entry, um, then chances are very good that you will still turn up through the Wikipedia entry in the top ten results of what they're looking for. That can be extremely valuable. Um, one of the questions I always ask is, what is more valuable, who you are or what you know? When it comes to understanding Wikipedia, it's what you know. So Wikipedia loves to collect experts, and everyone on this call is an expert, not only in their own business, but in their industry, um, in the specifics of their products or services that they offer. My belief is, and, and if we could the formatting of this call doesn't permit it, but if we could survey everybody on the call, my sense is that most of the people on this call do not currently have a Wikipedia entry, and I believe everybody needs a Wikipedia, a Wikipedia page profiling them or their businesses. One of the things that's important to know is that if you do not create a Wikipedia entry and do not establish it as a foundation, um, as your business grows and as you become more visible, you run the risk that someone else less familiar or friendly to your business will. So you have right now nothing, and um, one of the reasons you have nothing is because thus far your visibility hasn't been raised enough to attract attention. By the time it is raised to that level, you certainly run the risk of not being able to control your own Wikipedia entry. So. If you need a compelling reason beyond, beyond the 400 million monthly visitors um, to Wikipedia to build your own Wikipedia page, it's you better do it before somebody else does it. If you already have a business page, and I know that some of the people on the call today do, um, then my sense is that most people need to learn how to improve it. Um, even some of the major corporations in this country who have Wikipedia pages have lousy Wikipedia pages that don't really serve them well. Um, among the ways to improve it is by having, by making sure that there are more third-party sources and links, um, and those third-party sources and links, in other words, the outside expertise, um, what Buzz Snatchers know in crisscross communicators, which is our Buzz Snatchers working group, know is that um, it is possible to generate uh, your own third-party credible uh, citations and sources, and so we'll talk about that too. Um, if you already have an existing Wikipedia page, if it's already strong, and those are two large ifs because for most people that's not the case, but if you do, then there's still more you can do with Wikipedia, and that involves strategically contributing your expertise to other pages um, and learn how to get other pages um, to point to you. So again, let's assume you're in the financial planning industry um, and you already have for your own um, consultancy, you already have a Wikipedia page. It's fairly strong. What do you do next? Well, you start looking for topics on Wikipedia that involve financial planning, estate planning, retirement planning, um, insurance, etc. Um, and you begin to be a source and a contributor, an expert source and a contributor to those pages, including having those pages point to third-party credible articles about you and your expertise and what you do. Um, doing Wikipedia the right way is really uh, the challenge here. It's crucial to success here. You need to keep in mind um, this is not a Wikipedia is not a blog. It is not a press release newswire. Um, there is a 
very protective and very, very strong culture among those who monitor Wikipedia and the folks who violate that culture uh, really um, get bombed. Um, the least penalty of not doing Wikipedia intelligently and correctly, the least penalty is they will permanently um, delete your entry. And that's the least penalty. The, the, the largest penalty is they will not only delete your entry, but they will gather the troops, so to speak, to insult you for trying to uh, game the system. So here is the um, sort of here is the bottom line of this call. We don't want to game the system, but we want to utilize the system to its maximal ability to still go ahead and promote your businesses and services um, and yourself. And those things are not mutually exclusive. Um, Wikipedia rule number one: uh, any entry on Wikipedia must be objective and non-biased. And so, um, I the hardest thing for me to get um, those who attend my buzz snatching conferences to understand is is to take egocentricity out of it. If you are um, if you're an expert on if you're a travel agent and you're an expert on on booking travel that's effective, that's your expertise. You don't talk about, in a Wikipedia entry, your expertise is not to promote why your travel agency is better than somebody else's. You have to really think back to the old Encyclopedia Britannica and what kind of entries there were in there. If Encyclopedia Britannica didn't have to worry about paper and ink, it could have been infinite in size, which is essentially what Wikipedia is. And the beauty of Wikipedia is that as long as you follow its set of rules, it's happy. It's not unhappy. It's happy having a listing in there for buzz snatching and what buzz snatching is, as happy as it is having a listing in there for General Motors. Um, as long as the objective criteria, the non-biased criteria, is good. Now, from my point of view, I'm perfectly happy having an objective look at Buzz Snatching or my other business, newsbios.com. I don't mind having an objective look at that because I think objectively um, it is a service. These are both services and methods that people want to know about and need to know about. I don't have to hype it. So rule number one must be objective, non-biased. Warning number one, um, Wikipedia is open source, uh, which means Ideally, you write it, but others can edit and append to it. And um, you can't control the content beyond the fact that you are the initial drafter. Other people can't come along if they're critics of you and write things that are false. But they can if you file for bankruptcy and don't mention it in your objective report. Other people can come along and point out that you filed for bankruptcy. Um, and you can't do a damn thing about it. So <clears throat> there is a warning there. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is that once you have a Wikipedia entry, you no longer control it in the sense of that you cannot delete it if you change your mind. You can't take it down. If what you put up was accurate, you can't delete it. So <clears throat> it, is, it is sort of a permanent in-cement um, footprint that once you make it, you can't retract it. For most of the people on this call, and for most small business owners, entrepreneurs, consultants, etc., uh, none of this is a problem because um, you don't have. Uh, you, the, what we're looking for is to generate buzz and a following. It's not like you have a trail of people who hate you. I do want to give you just a personal example where I was involved in a nonprofit um, group that's controversial, and we um, and we posted a. Uh, Wikipedia entry about our group on Wikipedia, and some of the people who hate us uh, did come in and um, sort of constantly try to post, so constantly try to post false information, which we had to defend ourselves against. But this is for something if you're involved in political causes, if you're involved in, in any kind of social cause that's controversial, etc., um, then you have to, if you're on Wikipedia, you have to be prepared to deal with detractors. Um, you know, Wikipedia relies on contributing.
contributors in general who have no dog in the hunt. Um, because it's an encyclopedia, it particularly likes entries written by academics, think tank types, graduate students. Um, it hates self-promoters. Um, keep in mind that it hates self-promoters, and, and before this call is out, or about halfway through this call, I will continue to enforce to you how we do this without becoming self-promoters. Again, right now I am trying to um, monitor email. If you have any questions, uh, this is a live call. You can email me at buzzsnatching at gmail.com. That's buzzsnatching at gmail.com. If you have questions later or want to see some follow-up to this, please join our Facebook page at facebook.com slash buzzsnatching. Wikipedia um, outlaws, in theory at least, what it calls original research, meaning I can't, uh, I'm not supposed to, doesn't mean I can't, but I'm not supposed to go onto Wikipedia and write an entry about buzz snatching. Right now I don't have one, by the way. But I'm not supposed to go on there and write an entry about buzz snatching that's just based upon my knowledge of what buzz snatching is. Wikipedia wants me to base any, wants all of us to base any entry we put on there um, on what it perceives to be third-party independent sources. As I said, at least that's a theory. Um, in practice, that, that isn't always what happens. Um, I believe everybody on this call can, and I believe everybody on this call should conform to Wikipedia standards, yet still find ways to use um, Wikipedia to highlight what your business is. Um, now, the best way to begin, really, is to find and study some existing... Um, uh, so I have an a email from Tim saying, what I'm confused about is that I cannot find you on Wikipedia. Yeah, you can. I'm about to tell you about that. My, my current Wikipedia entry, is Tim and others, is for news bios, um, which you can look at. Now, I have to tell you that that entry has been up there for some time, and as I have learned more about... Um, Wikipedia, I intend to modify it and improve it. But if you want to see what I have done, you can go to my business's news bios. It's up there. Um, but what I really want to do is I want to point you to three other businesses that have Wikipedia entries that I don't believe these businesses wrote themselves. Um, but, but what I was starting to say is one way for you to, um, one way for you to start thinking about your own Wikipedia entry is to study others. So here are the three I suggest you study. One is Wall Drug in South Dakota. Uh, Wall Drug for decades has been a buzz snatching wizard. And um, um, I talk about it in my course, but it has a, a page and you can take a look at it. Second, I encourage you to look at the Wikipedia entry for the Atkins diet. That's how it's listed as the Atkins diet. Keep in mind, the Atkins Diet is a for-profit owned um, brand and, and concept, so take a look. So is Wall Drug. So Wall Drug, Atkins Diet. And the other one I'd like you to look at is Krispy Kreme, uh, the Krispy Kreme um, Donuts. And Krispy Kreme um, is spelled, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, with both words, Krispy and Kreme, begin with a K. So it's K-R-I-S-P-Y and K-R-E-M-E, -E. and Krispy Kreme is particularly interesting. For those of you who are familiar with it, it is now a New York Stock Exchange um, listed company. It is, um, it is um, large, and yet it has this, it has this um, listing on Wikipedia, and when it has had thousands, tens of thousands of articles written about it, and yet on my Wikipedia, when I do a Google search for just Krispy Kreme, and some of this may be different regionally, but you should try it. Simply doing a Google search for Krispy Kreme, um, its Wikipedia entry comes up number seven. So for all of the thousands of articles, et cetera, that have been written about it, um, it comes up in the free organic search number seven. More importantly than just noting its placement is the fact that the things above it um, are virtually all company-generated, which means somebody who's looking for basically a third party, what it perceives to be a third party um, um, review of Krispy Kreme is going to, the first entry they're going to find is going to be Wikipedia. So if I'm working for Wik if I'm working for Krispy Kreme 
and I don't think Krispy Kreme, by the way, I don't like the entry particularly. I don't think it's well done. Um, I think if the company had originated it itself, it could do a much better job, but there it is, it, and so you want to look at that. Um, the two others that I would mention are Kodak, as an Eastman Kodak, that you may want to take a look at, and um, again, the one that I said is News Bios. At the top of many Wikipedia entries, Kodak is one of them, there are basically warning signs saying this entry has potential problems with it it wants fixed. What's interesting is the News Bios entry, which I orchestrated, does not have any warning signs. It, it met the criteria as it should. But here are some of the warning signs at the top of the Eastman Kodak page. This is Wikipedia saying that since June 2008, its neutrality is disputed. It may require general cleanup to meet Wikipedia's quality standards. That's been a problem on the page since July of 2007. And here's the one that I find particularly interesting. It may have been edited by a person who has a conflict of interest with the subject matter, and that was something that was tagged on that listing in November of 2009. In other words, there are people out there looking for frauds or looking for problems, self-promoters. Um, they clearly are going to look at a listing at an entry from someone like Kodak more closely than they're going to look at an entry from News Bios which is at least part of the explanation why, why smaller companies have less to fear. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it right. It just, means, it just means that there are fewer people who are going to be scrutinizing you, at least to begin with. I do have some suggestions. One is that you don't, um, uh, you don't go for broke with your very first entry. Um, and we can, discuss this, we can discuss this on our Facebook slash buzz snatching page further, but um, ultimately I think you probably want to create two accounts with Wikipedia, um, one that uses your real name and um, real, real email and affiliation, and one that uses a masked name. Wikipedia, just so you know, does not require you to disclose your real, real name, and if they're going to kick you off, it would be better for them to kick you off from a masked name than from your real name. Um, we can talk about that on the uh, Facebook page. To build a Wikipedia page for your business, in brief, I want to tell you what the steps are that I think you'll need to take. Um, one is, if there are third-party articles about your business that you can use to source your entry, that's what Wikipedia wants. You need to locate those. So even if the local newspaper, um, the uh, school paper, any, anything that's not you, that has talked positively about you that you can reference, um, those are assets to have. If you don't have any of those kind of third-party articles or references, um, then it's important to, before you, do your, before you try to post your Wikipedia entry, it's important to have those third-party articles generated about you, those third-party credibility. That's a lot of what the whole buzz snatching course is, um, is, how to, is how to get credibility on third-party sites. Amazon listings and product pages are a good example of this. If you, if you have products that are products or books that are available on Amazon, you can cite those as third-party pages. Um, many Wikipedia um, citations will point to uh, recognized new, news releases that have gone out over recognized news wires such as Business Wire and PR Newswire. So you can uh, put out a news release on one of the major wire services, and then use that as a citation on Wikipedia. Um, I think importantly, um, we have a group right now that's 60 buzz snatchers in our crisscross communicators group, which means that there are, for everybody who's in that group, there are 59 others who are willing to um, write about and post articles um, about the, their fellow group members. Um, I have explained in, in, that I'm a... Um, reporter for examiner.com. It's one of, of a number of sort of journalistic style sites. Those are good places to get somebody to do an article about you so that you can then cite that article. When you do sit down to write your Wikipedia entry, you need to do it in the style of existing entries. So find half a dozen existing entries at, that, that have been approved, that don't have warning signs at the top, uh, and model what it is that you plan to do uh, for yourself against those that are already up there. 
Now, here's where <coughs> it starts to get intriguing. Um, I believe that what you need to do is have two strangers, or I will say at least two relative strangers, um, edit, edit your um, entries to vet your entries to make sure it is objective and that it follows the um, Wikipedia style. And then, um, um, after that, I think you need to have somebody who is a crisscross communicator, meaning somebody who else who is on this call or who is part of our buzz snatching uh, crisscross communicators group that has no ties whatsoever to you or your business. Chances are that you may not even have ever met that person actually be the individual who posts the entry for you. Um, Wikipedia strongly prefers that you not post entries about yourself. So, uh, I mean, to make it simple, basically, um, you write an entry for Wikipedia, you have a couple of people on this call vet it, and then I post it, I post it, I have no connection to you, and then the reverse happens the same way. I write an article that I want on Wikipedia, we have two people on this call um, that I don't necessarily know personally who vet it, and when that's done, you, whoever you is, um, you go ahead and post it. Um, the vetting process is important because we do, we're not trying to scam the system. We're trying to make sure it works. But we also understand that the way the system works best is when you're not self-promoting yourself. Okay. So I'm ready to facilitate that for anybody on this call who would like to. That means if you'd like to have, if you do not have a Wikipedia entry, um, and you would like to have it, what you can do is you, I will pair you um, with three other people either on this call or in our uh, crisscross communicators group, um, and the four of you will be able to help one another and um, uh, help with each other by vetting and by posting, etc. So in order to do that, you've got to, in order to participate, you have got to be part of the buzz snatching um, Google group. Um, if you're already on there, um, then you can just um, email. What you want to do is you want to email buzzsnatching at gmail.com. That's buzzsnatching at gmail.com. And let me know that you want to be paired with three other people to do a uh, Wikipedia entry. If you are not yet part of our Google group and would like to join so that you can participate, um, there's no cost or any kind of obligation again. Then send me your name, title, company, and contact information at buzznatching at gmail.com and let me know that you want to be part of this group, and we will do that. Um, Tim, I can always send in another question, and I won't have time on this call to, to respond, but I will respond. I'll post some of this stuff again at the, buzz, at the facebook.com buzznatching site. So um, just to sort of sum this up, um, Wikipedia can be an amazingly powerful tool. If you have a business or have a need to have a visibility for a product, a service, or for yourself, um, it's worth taking the time to figure out how to do a Wikipedia page well. Um, buzz snatching can help by getting uh, people who are not employees, who are not family or colleagues, to vet your entry to make sure you are meeting the objectivity standards. You can use people in our network to write about you on their websites um, or on third-party sites such as examiner.com in order to have quality uh, citations. The point is, is we've got a network of people who are willing to help you um, if you want to do it, and I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, I will continue to be posting. Um, I will continue to be posting to the Facebook page more information about all of this. Our next teleconference will be held two weeks from today, same time, same station. That's Friday, February 25th. At that time, we'll be talking about how you can boil down your expertise into 70 words or less and why you're going to want to do that. Uh, those people who are at the Austin conference know uh, the basics of all of this, but we will continue to explore this. Basically, I want you to be able to talk about, and, and I will give you reason to talk about what you know best in the world in 70 words or less. So 
I hope you'll join us again. You can mark your calendars. We plan to do these free teleconferences um, every two weeks on Fridays at 2 p.m. East Coast time. And if anybody is interested, if you couldn't make it to Austin, I will be doing another two-day live workshop in Denver on June 6th and 7th. Um, if you have an interest in that, again, email us, buzzsnatching at gmail.com. I want to thank you for joining this call and look forward to seeing you online and talking to you again in two weeks. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.